Hi folks and welcome to Homesteader News. Hey, this is part three of our series on installing off-grid solar and wind power. And uh, our sponsor for this is uh, Northern Arizona Wind and Sun. Their website is www.solar-electric.com. Uh, and they provided uh, most of the equipment that we're going to be installing. Now this is the equipment that I have already installed up on my roof. And as you can see, I've got a mix and match of panels here. Uh, some different brands. And these have been installed over a period of years. Uh, as I had the money, then I increased my system. And that's a good way to do it. If you don't have a lot of money, uh, you, you don't have to start with a big system. I started with just one panel uh, and a uh, deep cycle battery and a real cheap uh, shunt controller. And that's all I had to start with. And then I added to the system as I went along. Now, this system is installed up on my porch roof. And I want to talk a little bit about where to install your panels. Usually, uh, the, the best place to install them is up on a roof for a couple reasons. One thing, it gets them out of the shadows uh, that might be on the ground. Uh, it protects them also from flying rocks and bicycles and kids. So usually panels are up on, installed up on a roof. However, sometimes it's not the best place to install them because it depends on the, the amount of sun that you get on your roof as to where you install them. Panels work best when they're installed facing true south. And true south is not exactly magnetic south. When I built this cabin, I built it with the intention of using solar power, and so I situated it so it is facing, this porch is facing true south, so that my panels will also always get uh, direct sunlight uh, in winter and in summer days. The, you want to put your panels in a place where they're going to get the best sunlight all the time, and especially during winter time because that's when you have less sunlight, so you want to make sure that you're getting the best winter sunlight possible. Now, true south is it depends on where you are your latitude and longitude on the earth as to where the sun rises generally here in the northern hemisphere our sun rises over there in the east crosses across the sky and sets over there in the west if you're down under it's going to be exact opposite so you, you'll need to reverse directions if you're one of the people down under uh, for the directions i'm going to give here because i'm going to give them for the uh, northern hemisphere now the sun in the winter time also rises and, and follows a path much lower. It will follow a path from a direction over in the east, but it will stay at a much lower arc across the sky than it does during the summertime. In the summertime, it'll rise up somewhere over in this area, and it will travel a much higher arc, as you can see the sun's way up there now, and it will go across the sky, sit over in the east, a much higher arc. Now you've noticed that my panels here are set at two different angles. My panels here at the front are set at about a 10, 15 degree angle. That's to collect the summer sun. Uh, that's because the sun will be much, much higher during the, the summer. My panels in the back, you'll notice, are angled at about a 45 degree angle. That's to catch the winter sun. Now you could angle all of your panels at the exact same angle, and if you're gonna do that, I would recommend going with the 45 degree angle or close to it. That way you'll collect more sunshine during the winter hours, okay? That's the reason we do that. Now, my mounting system is homemade. They also make very nice uh, uh, equipment for mounting your panels. Uh, Northern Arizona Wind and Sun carries the mounting systems. You might want to consider doing that. I used my own mounting system. In this case, it's just a piece of PVC pipe, uh, sewer pipe that has the holes in it, and I've used that just to brace up my panels that are in the front there, just enough so that the, the snow and the rain will be uh, running off of those. It won't sit on top of those. My panels in the back have a uh, steel mounting system uh, that goes underneath them and, and supports those. What my plan is, is I'm going to take that big new panel that I got, that 135 watt Kyocera panel, and I'm going to be replacing some of these smaller older panels. Uh, I'm going to take them off of my roof, and what I'm going to do with those is I'm going to put them on that camp trailer you can see out there. That's my bug out camp trailer. And I want to put some solar power on that. These older panels, they work good, um, but they uh, not necessarily fit into my system. I'd like to replace those with that bigger 135 watt Kyocera panel. So I'm going to be taking those off. I'm going to use the mount system that they're on to install that large panel. I'm going to take one of these large panels and that new panel. I'm going to install them back here at the 45 degree angle. Uh, to collect a lot more sunshine during the winter hours. That'll boost up my system. Right now I'm at about 570 watts up here. And uh, that's enough. It actually runs everything that I have in my house. And I have a lot of electronic equipment. I run two laptops, two flat screen TVs, a game system, my water pump, all my lights. 
and a bunch of gadgets just off of this 570 watt system. And I've been doing that for now about five years with this, just this system, and it works great. But I'm going to be adding a what they call a Sundancer uh, refrigerator refri freezer that uh, will replace my propane refrigerator that I've been using. And uh, propane's gotten kind of expensive at 250 a gallon. Uh, it's cost me about a gallon a day to run a propane fridge. So what I want to do is I want to replace that with a refrigerator freezer that's designed specifically for running off of an off-grid system like mine. And then I can reduce the, the amount of propane that I, I use. I will still use it for an on-demand water heater and for my furnace, but I'll be able to reduce the amount of propane that I use by probably three-fourths of the amount of propane I use goes directly to my fridge. So I want to replace that. And so it, in my case, it was... Uh, the best way to do that was to add another solar panel. When I add that additional solar panel, that 135 watt Kyocera up here, and remove these smaller panels, that'll give me about 600 watts of solar panel. And then I'm going to be adding, <coughs> excuse me, I will be adding a 400 watt wind turbine, an Air X wind turbine that I also got from Northern Arizona Wind and Sun. And that will be going on that pole right there. Now what that pole is, uh, at one time, long before I uh, inherited this property, this pole, this power uh, line did come in here, and there was power to this place. And you can see that the lines still run out there. However, at the other end of that line, you'll notice there's no transformer. And when I moved up to this property, uh, they wanted about $3,000 to install the transformer, hook it back up. Plus, there were some uh, building code issues about running uh, 110 and 220 power to my little cabin. Uh, I didn't want to jump through their hoops, so I told them no. Don't bother installing the transformer, and I'll go with solar and wind power. But I'm going to be using that pole because it actually belongs to me. I paid uh, for the pole with, as part of the property, uh, so I'm going to be using that pole to install a wind turbine, and it'll be about 35 feet up in the air. So uh, in the, the next uh, couple of videos, we'll start talking about wind power, but for now we're talking about solar power. But as you can see, uh, on my property here, well, we've got kind of a junk pile that I'm working on, but I've got a washer and dryer over there that I'm going to be installing in my shed, uh, and they will be run off of a generator, uh, and then I'm going to be putting a, a refrigerator freezer in my shed that will be run off the solar power. Now, uh, when you're installing your panels, the mount system, like I said, you can get professional mount systems, and if you're installing them on a roof on the house, then you should uh, be very careful and aware of what you have underneath your roof system. You might have pipes or wiring underneath the shingles, and you don't want to just go screwing those uh, mounting systems in willy-nilly because you might uh, drill through something and get a shock or, or flood your system because you, you weren't paying attention. So go up in your attic, make sure you check around where you're going to be mounting that system. Also be very careful working on a roof, of course. You don't want to be falling off. So that's my system that's up here. As you can see, the wiring system's fairly simple. Uh, there's just two wires coming out of that bank of front panels. And what you do on a 12 volt system, you take all the positive wires from each panel and you run them together into a common wire. And you take all the negative wires and run them together into a common wire. And then those go down to your power controller. And that's, that's about all you really need. You only probably have two or three wires on the top of your roof after you run them all into a common. <coughs> you want to protect your wires and as you can see, my box, my solar panels lay flat against that roof, and then the power uh, boxes that are underneath them are, are protected from the weather. And because of the way the, the drain pipe is situated, any moisture or anything like that will just run right underneath those panels and right off the top of the roof. You want to make sure that your panels are mounted very securely, uh, because what happens uh, is if a big wind comes along and picks up a panel and you don't have it mounted securely, it's going to turn into a big kite and fly it right off your roof, and that's an expensive kite. So you want to make sure that your panels are mounted securely. Most panels have holes uh, made into the edges of them that are designed to be screwed into a mounting system, and that's what you want to use. Okay, so that's my roof system. Now I'll tell you a little bit about weather problems that you might run into. Here in uh, Utah, we get a lot of snow, and uh, especially in wintertime, the snow may get, we may get storms where it dumps a foot and a half, two feet of snow. Now, in the wintertime, what I have to do, and during the summer when I want to come check my panels, I shimmy out that window right there, and I come out here on my porch, and I use a soft bristled broom, and I just sweep the snow off of the panels. These panels that are at 45 degree angles, 
uh, they'll practically clean themselves. As soon as it warms up a little bit, the snow will just put, kind of uh, melt off of those. I don't have to sweep those off as much. The panels that are setting down in front, I have to sweep those off pretty good, and I may have to get out here four or five times in a bad winter and just sweep off my panels. Uh, you don't want to scratch the glass on the panels. You don't want to do anything that's going to affect the panels. So a soft bristle broom is what's recommended. Uh, the, the type that you would use to sweep off a patio or something like that, but it needs to have soft bristles. Uh, occasionally you want to come out and check your panels. And uh, you, what you want to look for is, are they dirty? Sometimes if you get a dust storm or something like that, if panels have a lot of dust on them, they're not going to be very productive. So you want to wipe them off with just a clean rag, uh, a little bit of uh, spray cleaner, something like that. They're pretty much maintenance free, but you do want to check your wires occasionally. A couple times a year I get up here and I just look at my wire connections, make sure nothing is, is starting to break apart or fall apart. And uh, if you keep your wire connections uh, secure and uh, in good order, you shouldn't have any really maintenance problems with panels other than just cleaning them off occasionally, uh, making sure none of your mounts have come loose, uh, anything like that. Now, some people ask me about uh, lightning and, and do we need to really worry about that. For one thing, aluminum is not a great uh, transfer of power, and uh, so it's not like having a steel pipe or something like that on top of your house is going to attract electricity. However, lightning can strike panels. It does happen, but very, very rarely. And I will show you when we mount the uh, batteries and the inverter in that in the solar panel, how you can ground the entire system. There's a couple of different ways that people ground panels. Sometimes they ground each, each individual panel in the bank uh, using special uh, copper uh, mounts, uh, but you can uh, completely ground the entire system because the panels are all attached to electrical wires. The path, what happens is the path of the electricity would transfer from the panels through the wires and travel down the wires. So where you're going to want to ground the entire system is in the wiring system. And when I get down to the bank of batteries, I will explain how to do that. Okay, that's my power system. And I'll go down and I'll show you what uh, batteries I've been using and the, the current power controllers I have. And uh, then I'll explain to you what we're going to do for the next steps. Okay, folks, I'm back down off my roof, feeling a little more secure. Uh, I did mention that uh, most people usually mount their solar panels up on the roof, but if your roof doesn't face to the south or doesn't face the, the sunlight so that you can get good sunlight on your panels, sometimes that's not the best place to mount them. In that case, you can mount panels also on the ground uh, using a rack system, or you can mount them on a pole, and that's called a pole mount system. They also have uh, highly technical poles that will actually track the sun. Those are called a tracking system. Uh, and it actually tracks the sun as it crosses the sky and keeps the panels always facing the sun. That's a little bit more expensive system. Most people use a permanent mount system either on the roof or on the ground or on a pole mount. Uh, and if you're interested in doing it in a, in a different way than mounting it on your roof or something like that, or if you're looking for the mounting system, talk to the guys at Northern Arizona Wind and Sun. They can direct you to the mounting system that might work best for you. Now let's take a look at my system and what I've been using for power. I'll tell you, my system's a little bit uh, on the scary side right now uh, because I've had it just out here on my porch for a number of years. It's time for me to uh, make some changes. I want to put my uh, system permanently into my shed, which I've got built over here, which I showed you. I'm going to be putting all my batteries and my electronic equipment over there. What I've done uh, here for quite a while is just have this system sitting out on my porch so I could come right out my door and check on my system. I also liked it because I could hear my uh, power controllers clicking on and off so I could tell that my system was actually charging all the time. It made it real convenient to just come out and check my battery connections and stuff like that. But it is recommended that you put these in a more secure location, a shed or a, at least a wood box or something like that. Some of my batteries are inside that wood box, the Trojans that I showed you before. They're inside that wood box. These bigger batteries here, these are a D8 series battery. And if you look at them, they're big honkers. They're almost the size of three batteries altogether, uh, each one of them. And I'm going to be adding probably two more of those size batteries to my system. Uh, they are designed for uh, large ground moving equipment. Uh, D9 cats and stuff like that use these same batteries. They have a lot of plates, very thick, heavy plates. They're designed to be drawn down low. Uh, they don't lose power like a, a car battery in that wheel. They hold that charge for a really long time. I really like those batteries. And I'll be adding, adding a couple of more of those to my system. There you can see my old uh, inverters down there. And like I said, I just use cheap inverters. And uh, those are not sine wave inverters. They're just standard, regular inverters. Uh, I think the one I'm using right now is only a 400-watt inverter. Uh, the one below it there is a 600-watt inverter. 
So my wires come down from my solar panels, and you can see that there's kind of a, a clump of them there. And then they come into these, and these are called shunt regulators. And uh, you can see that I'm using two of them. I have one for the front bank and one for the back bank of panels. They've got idiot lights on them. They just tell you if the battery is charged full, partial, full, or low. Now, how a shunt regulator works is basically all it does is it measures the voltage in the, the batteries. Uh, it usually has a set point of 14 volts. Uh, when the batteries show 14 volts, those shunt regulators just shut off the panels. That doesn't damage the panels at all. It just turns them off so they're not uh, putting more power into the batteries so you're not overcharging the batteries. That's how a shunt regulator works. It's basically just a switch on or off. The uh, PowerPoint MPPT uh, power controller that I'm going to be putting on the system that is digital, it has a lot of additional features. For one thing, what it does is it actually measures the amperage and voltage in the batteries, and it can also measure the temperature. If you want to use a temperature sensor, it'll measure the temperature of the batteries. But what it does is, is instead of just shutting off the panels, it will trickle charge those batteries anytime there's any drop in the voltage whatsoever or drop in the amperage, which is a much more precise, precise measurement. So it'll measure the amperage in those batteries, and it will trickle charge them back up to keep them full all the time, whereas the, the uh, shunt regulators don't do that. And so you're losing out on a lot of power because when it shuts them off, uh, then the panels are just up there. They're, they're still collecting electricity, but they got no place to put it. And so your batteries are not being completely charged up all the time. They're not keeping a, a charge to them all the time. So I'm going to be replacing those. I'll put one of those out on my camp trailer to use with my system that I'm putting on that. The other one I'll put in storage, and I'm going to be, be replacing those with that one uh, Blue Sky MPPT power controller. So that's the system that I'm, I'm looking at right now. And what I'm going to be doing is taking these batteries that are in this box and these ones on the porch, and I'm going to be putting those over in my power shed. And then I'm going to put that nice new inverter and that new, nice new power controller over there. And I'm going to run these wires that I've just got run down on my porch here. I'm going to run those over, make them nice and neat, and I'm going to run those over to the shed, and I'm going to hook all of that together. So that will be my next step is I've got to move all these batteries and equipment uh, over to my shed. So let's get busy.